Good morning, folks. We've got some outstanding science to cover today in the climate realm and heliobiology, and including two things to watch from the sun. Let's start there over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last day on our star brings the near equatorial coronal hole to central heliographic longitudes. Its solar wind will arrive at Earth over the weekend. Its seismic uptick potential goes through tomorrow. Solar wind has calmed considerably. Purple line, second from the bottom, it's the solar wind speed dropping back out and geomagnetic conditions are quiet. Let's get another look at that motion from the opening. Even without solar flares, the sun is providing some excellent plasma pushes at the departing active region, and we will be watching for flares today from the newly born active region on the south, pretty much born where the last one was born, pointing at Jupiter. Let's do some aesthetics here as we go to the first link, where Chandra and a peculiar X-ray return in deep space has them thinking. Two distant X-ray sources are multiply lensed and viewed as afar and up close due to the lens. Best guess is early active galactic nuclei in a dance before they collided in a flash whose light hasn't yet reached Earth. Of course, the sun reaches out to Earth radiatively, in light and particles and fields, and it couples and deflects and integrates, and while half of Chapter 6 in our textbook reviews the dozens of known space weather health connections, this is the first since Cherry 2002 to address SIDS so well. Big clap for these two authors here. Okay, climate jab, followed by a haymaker to ring the bell. The jab comes as another way in which the sun forces CO2. This is part of the devil's advocate aspect of our climate discussion. Let them have their CO2 game. Let them ignore the bias and model failures. This was where we had entered this one, where joule heating controls CO2 mixing ratios. And in that same vein here, the sun controls CO2 release, even in weak variability, which means that when they blame CO2, they are blaming the sun more than they know. And then we get to stop playing devil's advocate and come back to reality. But we are going to stick with joule heating. You all know what this is, electric current passing through a conductor and creating heat. A simple heating coil is an example. We've been going over how some of that energy is directly and indirectly sent through the planet and integrates with the atmospheric systems below. They figured it out better on Jupiter than they figured it out here. And today, they work to improve the data set. They are scrapping the large scale, macro, global only modeling and allowing the small scale to enter the picture and it's pretty impressive. Turns out they have underestimated joule heating by 50%, meaning there's one and a half times the joule heating they thought. And that's just from allowing some basic smaller scale electrodynamics into the modeling system. There's a long way to go, but this is the path that eventually leads to the truth about climate science, the truth about what's causing the modern shifts, and the truth about what's going to happen next. If you haven't seen it, or you could use a refresher, the climate playlist that began in 2019, is proving exceptionally predictive of the observations, discoveries, and peer-reviewed literature. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.